this will be a DC Omnibus review on the Jack Kirby Fourth World Complete Saga. Just first, check out how huge this book is. Made by DC Comics. Look at this. And the cover price is $150 in the US, but got it much cheaper on Amazon. And uh, you gotta take advantage of sale prices when they have it. But just look at this. Incredible. This is the dust jacket. And I'm gonna take this out so it makes it a little easier to review. Look at the hot cover. Inside of the book here. I'll give you a little bit of background before we get into this full review of the book. It is not including the bonus material, 1,481 pages. That is a lot of books. Actually, what happened was some backstory here, as I'm showing you the opening pages. The fourth world were some concepts and ideas that Jack Kirby took with him after he left Marvel Comics. He almost put these characters in the Marvel world, but he was uh, disgruntled by the system and he just moved on. And in the 1970s, he moved to DC Comics for a better deal at the time. And this fourth world saga is probably best known for introducing Darkseid, who is a universal comic book villain in the DC world. And what happened was the fourth world included four different books by Kirby. One was New Gods, famous for Orion, Light Ray, and uh, Darkseid and other characters. Another one was The Forever People, which is a bunch of teenagers. The third one, Mr. Miracle, which uh, was a kind of surprise to get a solo character. And the fourth book was actually this one, Jimmy Olsen. And the weird thing about this book is, I guess Kirby wanted a book that wasn't a high seller at the DC at the time. Because he didn't want to interfere with any uh, anyone else's run or work that was going on at DC Comics. And Jimmy Olsen with Superman in it. The very odd thing is of the whole fourth world epic saga here, and just a personal opinion here, mind you, is that Jimmy Olsen and the Superman book was the one that really didn't fit in to the fourth world. Because those are really DC proper characters and what Kirby was creating here was his own saga. Kirby usually works best on his own characters and properties, whether he created them or co-created them. But to work on another character like Superman or Jimmy Olsen, just my personal opinion, it didn't really fit his uh, ideas. It didn't really, it wasn't a good fit. That's what I'm saying. And Superman's so established and Jimmy Olsen and stuff that Kirby's take wasn't iconic or something that would really leave a huge impact. Again, he's just so much better on his own material, his own characters. And if there was a weak point in the in this book, this volume, it would be the Jimmy Olsen Superman stuff. Because the other stuff, the New Gods, the Forever People, even Mr. Miracle, just so much better. As you can tell, Kirby, uh, doing all the art in this volume. It's part of the fourth world, part of the omnibus line. One really nice thing here is, check it out, dark side. One really nice thing here is the paper quality is actually a little bit thicker and higher stock than what Marvel and the omnibus line by Marvel Comics is doing right now as I'm making this video. The paper stock by Marvel is pretty thin, even though it's still really good. But this paper quality is just a little bit better. 
And the colors, the reproduction, just like Marvel, top notch. The format, how they did the presentation here, it's really well done. I mean, both the Marvel and now the DC Omnibus stuff is top quality. Look at that, your dark side, the sod. All of those new char new gods characters that you're familiar with, Apocalypse, uh, New Genesis, all that stuff's in here. I mean, this volume, it's absolutely huge. But one of the appealing aspects to get this book was to get that original Kirby run all represented here in one volume. That was the purpose, that was the marketing. If you see the, the dust jacket, the marketing of it was putting Jack Kirby's name on it first, the fourth world. It's an omnibus. And all these characters, even though the, these books didn't last so long before getting cancelled by DC at the time, because they didn't really have the editorial or creative vision to realize this saga should have really went on for years. Well, these characters eventually became iconic in the DC comic book world later on. You can see the spacing in the middle. It's well done. It's okay. It doesn't get in the way. It's sewn binding, so you have the high quality binding of the book, so it's not going to fall apart. And what they do is they publish it in the order of uh, the run, that original run. You can see here, look at this. Really presented well. Look at that shot. This is an incredibly expensive book, we gotta say that, but also really high quality production and uh, how they put this thing together. Really nicely done. Really can't complain about that. The artwork, again, Kirby, you either like his style or you don't. Personally, I like it. Uh, very unique take. And look at this, the detailing, his stuff was still, in terms of his creative end, he was still at the top of his game in terms of his career and uh, his work as an artist and uh, writer or co-plotter sometimes. But here, not only did he create the fourth world, except for the Jimmy Olsen stuff, he was the writer, the artist, or the penciler I should say. Plus the other pe he had other anchors in it, and he was also, also the editor of the line. So this was basically as much full control of a property that you could ask for and get from a uh, major publishing company, unless you self-published or owned the work. Other than that, I mean, this was pretty much as creatively uh, freedom you could ask for. Always thought, besides Darkseid, who was the standout villain of the line, Orion, probably the best New, go new Gods character or favorite of what he was making here. You can see here, look at this, not even uh, halfway yet. I'm just going by quickly just so you get an idea of the art and uh, not spoiling the story. Actually what the... there is some really good evidence here and it's been uh, mentioned by others is that this New God stuff could have been Kirby's take of uh, what happened after Thor and the Asgardians died at Ragnarok. Let's say if this took place at Marvel 
and that basically New Gods was what came after the destruction of Asgard, all of that. But you know, in comic books, the characters can never really die, so they weren't going to get rid of Thor. But I think had Kirby been allowed to his run on Thor, this would have taken place after and in continuation in a way. That's a whole other topic, and you could look into that online if you want. Just like after the, this New Gods run, supposed to be another property that Kirby had was Captain Victory. And that was supposed to take place way after New Gods, but be a part of this world unofficially, of course. Just like this, if this took place after Thor, it would have been unofficially. And the behind-the-scenes stuff is really interesting is that Kirby got disgruntled at Marvel for a whole bunch of reasons and that was one reason he left for DC but DC it really didn't work out his return run in the 70s because none of these books really got to really have a long stay in terms of a run because DC canceled the books within a couple of years and then even by the mid to later 70s Kirby was back at Marvel because it was really the only game in town in the comic book industry then was either Marvel or DC to make a living even though they were independent publishers the two big names and still those two big names are Marvel and DC it's not like the 1990s where the independents became much more popular and profitable in terms of making a living. But different errors, you know, like if Kirby had been around at his uh, high point career-wise in the 90s instead, the industry would probably be much different. Really high quality stuff. Overall, the good about this volume is I think if you're a... Kirby fan will want to know what all of this Dark Side, New Gods stuff is about when it started. If you want that early run, especially to get it complete, and you want it in order, all the different books combined, this omnibus is great for that. The downside is it is super expensive, this volume, and the material might not be for everyone. You might not like, like the art style. Depends if you like the artist or not. And so, might be a tough call. But the really good thing is, if you've never read this stuff before, or only read a few issues and not a big run, then it's a great opportunity to get it, the whole reading experience in one really big, thick book. But overall, this is a fantastic volume. And just to get that huge run from the 1970s and the Jack Kirby, the New Gods, all together. Really just fantastic to have it all in one volume here. You can get a lot of extras. This is the cover. Actually, I do think this should have been the inner cover, really, instead of just on the jacket here. So this is it, the Jack Kirby Fourth World Omnibus. And I would say definitely get it if you're a Kirby fan, if you want to know what the Fourth World was all about here in one volume. Fantastically presented. Well done, production quality, and just a really fun read. And uh, thanks for watching, and talk to you later.